Exosister runs it home for one of the semi-biggest eh, 837 people out here, I'm not going to lie. Dimension Shifter is an awesome card. Make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. Top 32 breakdown here out of the YCS. 15 sprite decks in top cut. Huh. What happened to tier dominance out here? Hmm. We also had 12 copies of tier limits in top cut. Well, uh, 15 and fi 12 split there. That's 27 of your top 32 decks. Isn't that intriguing, ladies and gentlemen? We had two Exosister make it in to top cut, which is actually kind of interesting in and in itself. We had two Flanderies, and then we had one Mathmech screeching on in as well. But let me let me tell you what here. What happened to Rico? What happened to all of these other Mystic Mind decks? Did the format finally figure out how to handle these particular things? Because it almost kind of looks like they might have. Now, as we proceed into top 16 here, we have eight tier limits. So now this is where tier limits grind out Sprite because you see those numbers invert immensely there. We had six Sprite players as well within that top cut. Holy moly, man. And then for your rogue, you have one Exosister with one Flanderies for that part of Top Cut. That is crazy. Now, as we push on into Top 8 here, you had six tier limits. Holy moly. One Sprite. Wow, a lot of Sprite just got eliminated there. And then one Exosister. Top 4 was three tier limits, one Exosister. And your Grand Finals was tier limits versus Exosister, where you see Exosister grind out the rest of the competition there, giving tier limits, aka Dimension Shifter Turbo, a nice win. Let's pass on over to top deck list. Thanks, Konami. Wow, we actually got deck lists posted from Konami for once in their life. We have the winning Exosister list here actually playing Dimension Shifter within the main deck. Yes, we actually have Carpe Diem seeing player. I know a lot of duelists were on the fence about playing Carpe Diem in this deck. Um, I think that this is definitely something that makes this deck pretty good. You just got to get ratios down. And then, of course, we're playing Double Mystic Mine with one Necro Valley. Hmm. Lots of uh, cool tech choice here. I also see that we are... <laughs> yeah, we're citing one Zombie World. That's quite interesting. Uh, extra deck stuff down here. We have one Daybreaker, the Shining Mystical or Magical Warrior. That's interesting. You got the Utopia package in here as well. And then your package for Exosister looks... Pretty on point. And you've got a Gaga Ga Cowboy for time as well to kind of grind out some of, you know, the time roll shenanigans. But honestly, outside of that, I feel like, obviously, you have centralized win cons right here. You know what you're doing. Next up here, top four. Or, yeah, second place here. I see that we're playing the Eradicator Epidemic Virus. A lot of people uh, were looking at this event and going, you know, we need to have ways to kind of counteract, you know, the Mystic Mind strategies. So they went to the progress point here of we're going to main deck the Eradicator because when you're going through Curious Combo here, you'll drop this and then you go into the Gryphon, reset the Eradicator, and then you're basically good to go blow out, you know, any of the Spell and Trap decks. All right, that's, I, I guess it t took us to the point in this format that, you know, Mystic mind decks becoming such a problem that we eventually had to basically prepare for these things. So I don't see much of a problem with this. Um, I, I do definitely like the fact that you have seen this deck evolve. And, you know, 46 cards is nothing too crazy, in my opinion, in terms of the format development. I also do like the fact that we are playing Spooky Dogwood down here as well. Next up here, top four. This would be Christian Urena's list. Uh, so... We're not playing any of the danger package in here. Uh, we're just doing basic tier combo. Uh, by basic tier combo, I mean 
the most basic of stuff here. I also see that we are maining the Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill, which is good. Got Unending Nightmares of Cosmic Cyclones, in case you do run into something like Mystic Mine, along with Dynamiscus. And then, of course, something like Droll and Lockbird and Gammas to kind of detour and punish the opponent in case you do run into those particular things. It is kind of nice to see a little bit of a difference in builds, I feel like, here for the format. That you can see, you know, something like this step up to the format here and change a lot of the mentalities and things that we've seen for tier because right now so many people were like danger is 100 the best way to go well it looks like now you have results that prove a little bit differently so that's good next up here is ah <laughs> hi hi danger package ah i'm still glad to see we got triple nessie the one jackalope and the one suchinoko here for top four easy stuff i see we are playing the punk package in here as well. Honestly, the the whole big thing with this build that really catches a lot of people off guard is because making Papega Ruler feels absolutely amazing. You know, triggering that mill five to set up these relatively impressive boards is amazing. And of course, you do have your free little package of sprite stuff in here because, I mean, going full sprite combo is just absolutely easy as like the end of a combo piece here i i think that's what really makes this deck um particularly scary is just you can go through an entire tier combo you know teleport combo and then you can go through this as like the last stepping means to set up some particular good stuff and you don't really get punished for it at the end of the day also shout out to eradicate or, or yeah eradicator for being the blowout ah we got more Eradicator. I think everybody in the room here kind of started to get the right idea here about Eradicator. Now, this is where we see Brandon and High Spirits coming in play. So, reveal one monster in your hands. Any level 8 fusion monster from your extract to the graveyard with the same type as that monster. Attack and defense. Then you can apply the effect. Discard the revealed monster, and if you do, add one Fallen of Albaz or a monster that listed in its text from its deck to your hand. During the end phase of a fusion monster with sense of the graveyard this turn, you can add this card from a graveyard to your hand. Huh. Level 8... Hmm. So this actually meets the requirements to go search for Albion. It's actually a kind of little cute interaction here. We, I believe we saw this out of Oceanics from Bowden, if I recall. Um, I could be wrong about that. But yeah, the Brandon High Spirits to search for the Albion is definitely a cute little interaction here. I also like the fact that a Grave Dragon here was getting some pretty massive love out of the weekend. And the virus is seeing huge play here. All right, as we shift on back here, huh? You notice anything anything similar here? Huh? So we're still doing full tier limit combo. You got your punk package in here to punish the opponent. You got ye old Shinobi Necro in here as well. We've seen this in a previous list here. I also see that we got double spell canceler in here as well. Um, it really did take the format how long to adapt to needing cards to stop Mystic Mind. Like, you can definitely tell at this YCS that players didn't want to lose to Mystic Mind because they all adapted towards Eradicator Epidemic Virus. They all adapted towards, you know, more hate, like Unending Nightmare and things like this. So it just took three too many events for the format to shape up for this. And then we also have Anti-Magic Arrows here. At the start of the battle phase, for so the rest of this turn after this card results, neither player can activate spell or trap cards or their effects, and neither player can activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation. Good stuff. All right, next up here, uh, is this, Miss? yes, this is Chansey Wigglestove's list. Oh my gosh, we are playing the one Gamma Burst down here. I do like the one Gamma Burst. I, I find this card to be particularly hilarious, just in the fact that, you know, sure, all of your level two, rank two, and link twos gain, you know, 1400 attack points. If you summon a whole board of your friends here, these are all pretty big beat sticks at the end of the day. You know, something something about a 1600 attack Deep Sea Diva coming in to end the game, you know, seems a little bit scary in my honest opinion. So little things to really consider for 500 here. Um, we also have Dimension Shifters down here in the side. I was wondering how long it would take for something like, you know, Sprite to adapt towards this, but it definitely looks like in the long run that that adaptability has definitely carried us forward here. So overall, I, I like what we're seeing here in terms of the shifts for the meta. And last but not least, we have a, another tier list. Um, 
we are playing the Supreme Sea Mirror. This card is an almost boss and send one Aqua Monster your deck to the graveyard, except for Supreme Sea Mirror. And during your end phase, contribute this card, target an Aqua Monster in your graveyard, and add it to your hand. Holy crap. Well, Aqua, 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 yep. Cool, so Supreme Sea Mare here all gives you triggering points for these. Oh, that is hilariously cute. I actually never really thought about that. Um, outside of the rest of this, I like the fact that we have Skill Drain down here as well. This kind of aims to curve out a lot of the weaknesses that we'd already seen you know, previously in a deck like this, but good stuff, Konami. So overall, that is your breakdown of info from Konami and everything really for this event. So what do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think and I will see your beautiful faces back here later on in the day, guys. Patrons, thank you. Uh. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.